Throughout my years of driving and reviewing vehicles, I've driven a handful of these big cargo vans or passenger vans. I've had the opportunity to drive the Sprinter a few times now. I've driven the Metris also. I've driven the Ford Transit. I've driven the Ram ProMaster. And I'm always wondering why they give these things to me to review. But nonetheless, I like the challenge. And of course, they're super popular, none more than the Sprinter for things like van life, for small businesses. So I'm definitely excited to get you guys a good review on this 2500 Sprinter. Let's get into it. All right, before we dive into this one specifically, there are a ton of different ways to configure a Sprinter. You've got almost infinite options here. So first you have a few options with the iconic Sprinter. You have what we have here, which is the cargo van. You have what's called the crew van. You can get it optioned as a passenger van. And then of course you can get the cab chassis, which just has the cab and an empty chassis. Like I said, we have the cargo van here, which then comes in a few different options, including a 144 inch wheelbase with the short roof, 144 inch wheelbase with the tall roof, 170 inch wheelbase with that high roof, or a 170 inch wheelbase extended with the high roof. This is the 170 inch wheelbase with the high roof. It's not the extended, so this thing can get <laughs> even bigger. And then of course, once you pick your wheelbase, you're offered even more options, including the 2500, 3500, 3500 XD, and a 4500. So this is a Sprinter cargo van with 170 inch wheelbase and high roof, and it is a 2500. And before we can move on with your different standard options, we need to talk about the engines offered. So let's go ahead and pop that hood and check out what's powering this and talk about the different engine options for Sprinters. All right, so once you're finished picking out your wheelbase and the class that you're getting, you're gonna have to pick out an engine option. There are three. Your base option is a four cylinder gas engine, which is what we had in the last Sprinter I drove. Then you have a four cylinder diesel engine and a six cylinder diesel engine, which is what we have here. This is a three liter V6 turbo diesel. It pushes 188 horsepower, 325 foot-pounds of torque, is rear-wheel drive, which you can option up to a 4x4, and we've got a 7-speed automatic transmission. Now, this is the premium engine option, but if I was jumping into a Sprinter, this is definitely the option that I would get. That turbo diesel is going to be more fuel-efficient, but also has plenty of power to pull around this big old thing, even when it's loaded down with weight. Speaking of weight, your payload capacity is 3,737 pounds in this specific configuration. Your max towing here is 5,000 pounds. And before we jump inside and take a look at the cargo volume in the back and the interior of this vehicle, let's go ahead and walk around and check out some of the exterior features. And the first thing to talk about is this thing is just a big vehicle. I'll talk more about the actual size in just a second, but it is actually even difficult to get it all in frame on the camera. But obviously we're managing the paint here is called Brilliant Blue and it is a optional extra. It is a premium paint that you're gonna pay extra for. I like it. It really makes this big vehicle stand out even more, but I would think that the majority of these sold are either gonna be solid white or solid black, which makes a lot more sense. We do have those black plastic bumper cover and your plastic black that goes along the edge. That's gonna help from paint chipping or scratching and make this more of a rugged vehicle. Got the big chrome Mercedes logo up front. You can option up to a chrome grill but I don't think you need it in one of these things unless you're just trying to be flashy. We don't have fancy LED headlights in this vehicle either. They're adequate, but it would be nice to have some nice, brighter, better LED headlights here. You can see that big antenna sticking up over the forehead of this van. Along the side, we do have folding side mirrors. So the side mirrors really aren't that big. From the inside, they're actually a bit difficult to see around the vehicle. 
but it is a dual stacked side mirror and they can power fold with a button inside. So when you park it, if you just want that extra safety that nobody's gonna clip your side mirror, you can fold those in. Our wheels are 16 inch steel wheels and those steel wheels are wrapped in 245, 75, R16, all season Michelin tires. Obviously we have the huge flat side panel, great for a large business decal, or of course you can wrap the entire thing. But you can see with the cargo van, it does not include any windows in the side or rear. And then speaking of the rear, we've got large dual barn doors, and those do swing open all the way back to the sides. Got that Mercedes logo, the Sprinter badge, and your 2500 badge. And then up there on the top, on top of the high mounted brake light, you do have a camera that looks down over your rear end. And let's quickly talk about the full dimensions of this beast before we jump in that cargo area. So your overall height is 107 inches. The full length of this one is 274 inches. The width from one mirror to the other is 92 inches. And your full wheelbase, of course, is at 170 inches. So first off, your load height from the ground to the cargo bed is 27 inches so it is a bit difficult to get in here this one is equipped with the trailering hitch which allows you to uh, put your foot right there and get in a little bit easier but as you can see this is basically a fully empty non-decked out cargo area we do have the paneling on the floor as well as some paneling equipped on the wall already we do have a cab separator that separates the cab from the bed with a window. And while that's not great if you wanna be going from the cab to the cargo area without having to come out of the vehicle, it definitely helps with cooling the cab so you don't have to cool this big empty space. We do also have the side sliding door, which has a lower step in than the back cargo area. But your standing height here is 79 inches, I'm 6'1" and uh, can stand up in here with no issues. And again, we already have a floor in here, so that's taking up maybe a quarter or half an inch. The full length of the cargo bed is 174 inches. The width from one wheel well to the other is 53 inches. And then your total width is 70 inches. And your full cargo volume here is 488 cubic feet, which is a massive amount of space. Again, I'm 6'1", a bit of a bigger guy, and I can touch wall to wall. I can uh, walk without hitting the ceiling. The cargo area is also already equipped with LED lighting. Whether you're wanting to put tools in here for your job or equipment for another job or trying to turn this thing into a living space for a van life, this has a great amount of space. All right, let's jump in the cab and check out the rest of the interior of this cargo van. All right, guys, so as you can see, just like it's tall and hard to get into the back, it is tall and difficult to get into the front. It is a lower step in, obviously, but uh, still a pretty big vehicle, and you've gotta really pull yourself in. Again, I'm 6'1", and even for me, it's a bit difficult to get into this thing. It's also a, a pretty tight fit in the cabin, especially with this wall. The seat backs are literally on the wall. We do have black leatherette seating, which is nice. They are heated seats, uh, power adjustable seats, memory setting seats, but as soon as you try to uh, lean the seat back back, it actually pushes the bottom of the seat forward because your seat back is already hitting the back there. So to be back far enough to where I'm not too cramped at the pedals, my seat has to be sitting up pretty straight. Definitely not the biggest deal. It's not like 
uncomfortable to drive, but uh, not quite as comfortable as not having this back on here, I'm sure. But again, having this wall allows you to cool and heat the cabin without having to cool and heat the entire cargo area, which I'm sure is a huge boost to efficiency. Let me go ahead and kick it on and give you a little tour around the cab here. All right, and first off it is push button start. Let's kick it on. You can probably hear that diesel engine start up. It's not terribly loud, but uh, you can definitely hear it. We do have a seven inch touchscreen display with Mercedes MBUX multimedia system. Not a huge display. They do make one a bit bigger, but not too much bigger, but it's pretty adequate for what you're gonna be doing in this thing. We do have the full 360 camera system, a nice backup camera with good guidelines here. It even shows you how wide out the front end is gonna turn, which is very helpful in this big old thing. Of course, you can get better views of different cameras here including a hitch camera. We do have built-in navigation. We do have nice systems like active lane keeping assist, active brake assist, attention assist. The Mercedes system is really good and even in this small screen, it works just fine. Below that we have some physical buttons, a button for your camera system, a button to jump straight into the navigation, the telephone, the radio, your volume rocker right there, a quick button for your vehicle settings to mute or turn off the system and to go back or to your home. Another really great thing in all of these uh, Mercedes vehicles are the cubbies that you get. You've got a ton of different cubbies that can hold a ton of different things. So you've got something right here that's great for like a cell phone or something small. We've got different size cup holders right here. We've got a kind of open glove box over here. We've got cubbies on the roof and you've got big cubbies in the doors. We also have cubbies up here on the dash with some more cup holders and just cubby areas. We also have USB ports way up here, two USB type C ports, including one that will interface with the infotainment system. So all of that is right up here on the dash, which if you're throwing your phone up there or something, is going to get hot from the windshield or you're going to have a cord running up and around lots of storage which is great for a vehicle that you're going to spend a lot of time in a little further down from the infotainment system is your ac and heat controls all physical buttons here and i can tell you that the ac definitely works good even in hot summer days here in texas even with these large windows moving on to the steering wheel we do have all the mercedes controls on the steering wheel so you can control the uh, system over here or you can control your driver information system you've got paddles on the back for paddle shifting through your gears you've got some standard buttons to the left of the steering wheel including your electronic parking brake and your automatic headlights coming back to the driver information display you've got two analog gauges here and then that digital display that can be flipped through to show different information Next, we do have a rear view mirror. Not even sure why, it's actually kind of distracting because it reflects from the back windshield here. So you actually see the road from the front reflected into this thing. It would be great if it had one of those flip around things where you can see the rear view camera out of this thing. But if they offer that, this one is not equipped with it. So again, it's a big vehicle, a little bit cramped quarters up here, but nice tech overall. Let's go ahead and get this thing out on the road and talk about the drive. All right, guys, let's get this thing out on the road. We'll start off with a pretty tight back road over here to show you that this has no problem handling tight back roads. Again, that V6 turbo diesel puts out plenty of power to move this thing. Definitely audible, but uh, plenty of power. Brakes are good. Turning is super easy, really feels good. And again, as long as you're mindful that this thing is a super long vehicle, navigating parking lots or tight roads really isn't that big of a deal. 
super easy to drive and maneuver. Back when we tested out the uh, Ram Pro Master, we actually had it at an event where we went and picked up um, pallets of feed and then drove those back to a ranch. And we had to go through city streets. And it was a great experience, a little nerve wracking, <laughs> but a great experience. I would love to have this thing packed down with some weight and really get it out on some roads where it would be driven. But as much as I've driven this thing throughout the week, it's been just fine. I even dropped the kids off at school with it, obviously one by one because it's only a two passenger. This actually comes in a three passenger setup, but this one does not have the middle seat, so it's only a two passenger setup. But it does have a 24.5 gallon fuel tank, so filling this up not only is gonna be expensive, but it's gonna give you over 400 miles of range, which is great for a big vehicle like this. And of course, like I said, you do have a lot of safety features like the lane keeping assist. We have blind spot monitoring. You have radars all around this thing. So as you get close to things in a parking lot or whatever, it will beep and let you know. So again, as long as you keep in mind of what you're driving, it's really not that difficult to maneuver in a parking lot or in other tight spaces. It is difficult to judge speed if you're not used to driving a vehicle like this. I, I continuously find myself going way under the speed limit if I'm not paying attention to how fast I'm going because this big old thing feels like it's going faster, which also means getting it up on a highway and doing highway speed is a little nerve wracking at first also, but obviously it can do it without any issues. And again, with all that torque, it's not really any issue getting up to speed on a quick road. Like I already mentioned, finding a comfortable seating position is a little bit difficult because of this back wall, but it's not uncomfortable to drive. I like the steering wheel position. Some of the other cargo vans have the steering wheel more flat and feels more like a bus driving. This thing just feels like a bigger SUV driving. Everything is laid out well to be able to touch and configure and the buttons on the steering wheel work wonders. Again, the biggest gripe that I would have with the interior is I would love this to be the rear view camera. Otherwise, just get rid of it because I can see the reflection of the road in front of me which is a bit weird. The side mirrors are kind of small for how big this vehicle is, which is great for maneuvering tight spots, but uh, it's hard to trust them at first. This is the rear wheel drive option. And years ago, we drove one of the four wheel drive sprinters out on an off-road trail and <laughs> it was hilarious but uh, worked just fine. So if you are building this out as a camper or you have a job where you need to drive one kind of off-road to a job site, that four x four option is great. Yeah, there's not much else to talk about when it comes to driving this big old thing. It's not as hard as you might think by looking at how big it is from the outside. But with that, let's find a place to pull back over and we'll uh, talk about the price, some of the competition, and I'll give you some of my final thoughts. All right, guys, before we wrap up this video, let's quickly talk about pricing and maybe a little bit of competition, and I'll give you some of my final thoughts. Now, the Sprinter, again, has a wide range of options that start out at just around $38,000 and can be specced up way up to $70,000 or more, depending on what all you're getting. And that's not including packing it with whatever you're going to be building back here. That's just for the truck itself. Our 170 inch wheelbase 2500 has a base price of $48,110. When you add all the little options that we have in this vehicle, it has an MSRP of just south of $60,000, which isn't terrible, but definitely if you're doing a build out of this thing, you wanna get one as cheap as possible. So probably some of the options in this aren't gonna be what you're gonna put in your vehicle or maybe it is. Let's jump out, talk about the competition and some of my final thoughts and we'll wrap this thing up. All right guys, and after a full week of driving the Sprinter cargo van, it's, uh, it's a bit of an experience. It's definitely not something I would recommend if you're not needing this big of a van. If you can get away with running your business with a smaller 
cargo van. The 2500, not only is it big, but it's tall. Jumping in and out of it through the whole week has uh, got my hip hurting a bit. That being said, if you uh, need a van this big or you're building out like a, a van life van, again, be mindful that you've got to get in and out of this thing multiple times a day for a while. I'm sure there's a lot of aftermarket stuff that can help with uh, side steps and things like that. I think that would definitely help. But being able to stand up in the van, being able to have room from side to side is great. Being able to have the full length is great. And really, like I said, driving this thing does not feel like you're driving such a massive vehicle. It's really easy to maneuver in tight spaces. You just have to be mindful of the length of the van and you'll be fine. And it's really hard to justify or not justify this for somebody. You're definitely gonna be buying this for a purpose. Like I keep saying, if you've got a business that needs it, you've got a build that you really want this size of a van. I think it's a great option comparing it to the other big cargo vans out there. I really like the way that this one drives. The Transit drives really well as well, but the Sprinter is definitely kind of the gold standard as it comes to cargo vans. The only one that I haven't driven that I really want to is the Nissan, but hopefully we'll get that at some point. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Sprinter. Again, let me know what you'd consider getting this for. Is it a van life build? Is it a business that you're running? And if you own one for your business or van life, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. Of course, if I didn't answer something that you would like to know, leave it down in the comments and I'll try to answer that after the fact. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We do a different review every week if you're into automotive reviews. And again, we really like getting these cargo vans and we've gotten quite a few over the years. So if you wanna go back and check out some of those, I'll leave some links down in the description. Also, if you're new, go check out txgarage.com where we've got a lot of other written reviews as well as event and news coverage over there from a lot of great authors. And with that, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let's see, if I was building this out, it would be kind of a mobile studio. I would probably have a rack of equipment on this side and kind of a desk over here on this side. Maybe a monitor kind of mounted to the wall if, we could, if you could pull that off. Definitely would need some insulation and lighting. Maybe a bit better lighting than these LEDs in here. If you're gonna do any kind of video in here, maybe a better kind of backdrop, but definitely some uh, sound deadening because this thing echoes a lot if you're gonna do any kind of uh, audio quality stuff in here.